Hi, I'm the owner of the Etsy Tiltwell store. It's a bunch of 3D prints that I have. As you've probably seen from my reviews from Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens on YouTube, you can see I've developed a real interest in a collection of fountain pens. And I've also really developed an interest in 3D printing, being able to solve my everyday problems with designs and prints that make my little life a little bit easier. When I first started using fountain pens, uh, the main ink I was using was the Pelican uh, 4001, which is a really good line of, of inks. And I got the ink bottles down to the point where it would be so low that I couldn't fill the nib anymore. And so I would end up using something like this, which is also a, a 3D printed item, and it's called an, an ink saver. Um, but these things are, are somewhat flimsy, not a big wide area. I end up spilling stuff. So anyhow, uh, for the first problem, I thought if there was a way I could just tilt this thing up, because I was going through and filling up with one hand doing this, one hand doing this, and it just doesn't work so easily. So the first thing I came up with was this little guy. And I uh, printed it kind of thin. I printed so it mainly held these, these bottles. Uh, to keep the thing from tipping over, I put a little foot on it. And then it occurred to me I could sell these things, so I ended up coming up with um, the logo trademark. Uh, and I printed it fairly thin so that you could kind of see through it. I put lots of holes in it so you could see the ink as you're drawing it out. Um, and I wanted to make it light. Then the, uh, the next thing that happened is I found out that as the ink got down to a certain level, even this tilt wasn't enough to give you the level of ink that you need to to make this thing work. And I didn't want to use this anymore, so I came up with a design for my ink saver. I wanted to make sure it had a, uh, a nice broad base on it. I wanted to be able to have a big broad mouth to it so I wouldn't spill stuff. I wanted to have a little pour spout so I could easily put, put it back in. So when the ink level gets down to a certain point where you're not being able to draw ink anymore, what you do then is you just open this up and pour it into the ink saver and you just need to fill up to about here. These are all checked to make sure that they're, they're leak proof. And then what you do is you take your pen and you stick it in here and if it's a lever filler or piston, you pull the thing up. And then when you're done, you'll have a little bit of ink left over. You can pour it back in there. And you might be able to do that three or four times before there's virtually no ink left at all. Uh, so I made some of these. I made these in different colors. The other thing I noticed is that I made this hole big enough to fit even my fattest pens. This is my fattest one. It's a Jin Hao, and it fits fine in there. But then it occurred to me, well, gee, now I got a stable platform for filling inks. What else can I use it for? And I found out if I made the hole just a little bit larger, you can fit the little sample bottles in there. Yeah, because these things are just not really all that safe to leave open. So that worked for that. And there's several colors available for that. I think I might have a couple colors for this small guy. But then as my, my interest grew, I ended up with other inks. And some of the inks sort of fit. They're a little um, loose. Uh, some didn't fit at all. Uh, so I had to come up with a bigger one. So I got all my inks out. I had a fairly good sized collection at the time. And I just made a bigger version of this. But now what I did is I put in all these little recesses all over the place to fit about eight different kinds of ink bottles. So now for instance, the Iroshizuku fits right in there like that. It's nice and stable. Um, Diamine is another um, popular um, ink, and it fits right in there. Uh, some of the smaller bottles, uh, I put a, um, uh, a curve here, and, and that fits well as the, there as well. I also printed these fairly thin, so again, so you could see 
see through easily what's what's going on with the ink and again with the foot on the bottom uh, so it doesn't tip over this way so I started making these in a bunch of different colors um, like this is a cool one I really like this although not many people buy it but it's a translucent green and it uh, I think I think ink bottles look really cool in there it's still kind of translucent because it's kind of thin uh, but some people had complained that it's just a little bit too flimsy and they'd like to have something thicker. So I developed an inventory of these in several different colors and you can see that on my Etsy store. Um, so I made what's called a Gen 2 and this is the Gen 2 and you can kind of see how I made the, uh, the walls of these things thicker. And at some point in the design process I made the holes a little bit smaller and moved them away so everything was a lot sturdier. So, especially with some of the colors, um, you don't get t the translucency anymore, but it's nice and solid, and it still has all the cutouts and everything so that, so that everything can fit in there really well. There are a fair amount of mistakes that get made as I make these things. The filament behaves differently. A gremlin gets in the machine and, and messes up a print. Ones that are still functional but maybe don't look as good are going to my seconds pile. So that's an opportunity for a bargain. That's what those are about. The next thing I did was, you know, I have some pens. All my pens have a clip on them, except maybe with the exception of this one. This is an early Waterman 12 that's a, uh, an eyedropper. And if your table's not really level, this thing can roll all over the place. Why not make a simple little pen stand? And that's what this was. And so you can do it to keep things steady. Uh, you know, I have some more expensive pens where this won't go rolling, but it just feels a little bit safer if it's um, held firmly somewhere like that. Even with a, a pen that has a clip, this one's not postable. And so uh, that will stay put but this one can also go rolling all over the place. So it's just handy to have something to um, put your pen, keep it from rolling off the table. And, and maybe just presenting it a little bit as well. There was uh, a customer who said that, you know, this isn't perfectly symmetrical. This side isn't the same as this side. And so I made a Gen 2 version of this that almost looks exactly alike, but both sides are, are the same design. So that's an opportunity for that. And these are not priced at a very high price either because I can make a bunch of these at the same time. I can't with the others. The others take anywhere from four hours to eight hours to build. When I, when I had these, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun if I had a little bit more elegant of a pen holder? And so I went ahead and looked on um, Thingiverse, and it's not there anymore. The designer moved it away. But there's an Italian designer I started working with, and he allowed me to use this design to make these guys. They're called the human pen stands. And they're also available in different colors. Uh, this one has no infill. Um, infill is something that helps make it sturdy. Also makes it really light, and I can print them um, fairly fast. But I thought that looked pretty cool. So you can take, take your pens, and I think they just look cool on a desk. <laughs> you know, your pen for the day maybe, or the pen you want to kind of show off a little bit. And I have these, um, most of these are like in flat black, and that, I think that's a really cool color, but um, if you want to make a statement, uh, we have this color. We also have red and blue and gold and um, several different colors that you can see on my site. Uh, but someone um, got one of these recently, and they had a pretty heavy pen. It wasn't this, but it was a nice pen. But these these guys probably only weigh 20-25 um, grams, something like that. And I think the pen that, that he was using was probably something that was a 50 or higher. And, and actually this might work if I... yeah, nope. <laughs> you see what happens? Uh, because I made it so light, it falls right over. Now some of these have 10% infill, so 10% of the inside is, is full. And they'll actually work with this pen, uh, but the clip has to be positioned that way, which is kind of silly. And I thought, well, I need to fix this for people who carry heavier pens. 
So I had another line, and this is called marble-like um, filament. And this guy is probably two to three times heavier than that guy. And now I can, I can handle big pens. It's almost solid. In fact, it's um, got some heft to it. And by the way, these things, you can, I don't know if you take a look at this, but the hand does not perfectly match the pen. But if you put a hairdryer on here, until the point where this is pretty warm, you'll find out it's all kind of um, squishy, it moves around. You can form the hand to your pen, and so it'll be an even more secure um, platform for, for holding your pen. Uh, right now, these heavy ones uh, take a much longer time to print, and they're fraught with some errors, so uh, only about one in two actually make it through to, to the end. So the price of these are, are higher than the other uh, human pet holders. So I, I hope you got some value out of seeing this. Um, when you get your products, you can kind of see the story behind them and um, what their purpose is, how to use them. And that's it. Thanks for watching.